So you can see my screen? Yes, we can see up your screen. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, dear students. No, So thank you for attending for this class. And then uh, I'm very happy also to be part of this learning session. So we will be discussing stress management, occupational health. Now, what jobs do you have or have you had tried or work? You have tried what gives you an experience of stress? So for this, uh, the, the students, no, you can write in the chat box if you are uh, shy to raise your hand or you can raise your hand. So in your life, no, what jobs have you have tried that uh, where you experience stress? What kind of tasks were you engaged at? And then because of this task, you experience some kind of stress. So anyone, please? Or you can write in the chat box. Okay. So perhaps later you can uh, uh, have some answers to our questions. But uh, for now, okay, we will uh, start with the lecture. So definitely I know that you have had jobs where you experience stress because this is something very common, especially if you interact with other people. Now, do you think that the stress experienced by people handling the jobs remain for a long time? I think no, no, definitely, because there are, other, there are certain ways to manage stress, and this is the thing that we will also discuss later. So for our topic, we'll focus on what are the concepts of stress, what usually are the sources of stress, what are the ways by which to manage stress, and what are these environmental stressors, especially in one's uh, occupation that can cause stress. Okay. So there, I cannot move. Now, when, when it comes to stress, there are certain concepts that we have to be familiar with. So let's start by reviewing some of these terms and concepts. Uh, I know that you have heard of this in your other subjects. First, let's look at the term stress. Stress is a reaction. So as a kind of response to happening or situation in life, as a reaction, it has a psychological component. It has also a physical component. As a psychological component, the reaction can be emotional, no, it can be cognitive, it can be behavioral. It likewise has physical components such that when you are experiencing stress, you, for example, notice your body will be perspiring, you notice your heart rate will be increased, there's an elevated pulse rate, your blood rate pressure may also increase, and there can also be irregular breathing. And these are examples of the physical reactions to certain life events known as stress. Stressor, on the other hand, is the cause of stress. So where is the stress coming from? And that is the term stressor. So stressor, where is the stress coming from? These are the causes of stress. These are often life events. So stressors are happenings in the person's life that will cause stress. Take note that happenings in the person's life that can cause stress can be both becoming from negative happenings. Example, like the death of a loved one can be stressful, the loss of a job illness or sickness in the family. But take note also that stressor can come from even positive events. For example, when one is preparing for a happy event like the marriage you know, of a family member, that can also be stressful even if it's a positive event. Strain is the consequences of stress. So like what happens now to the person if he, he or she is experiencing stress? For example, if I am experiencing stress, what now is the effect on me? What are the consequences? And that is the one described as the strain. For example, because of stress, I cannot sleep properly or I sleep too much. Because of stress, I am eating a lot or I am not eating that much 
or because of his stress, I am very moody and I am easily uh, irritated with certain things around me. So these are certain terms that we have to remember about stress. There are two types of stress, the eustress and the distress. Now, when we say eustress, this type of distress is the conversion of a positive energy. Hence, eustress is a positive kind of stress. Why is this considered a positive kind of stress? Because when a person is experiencing eustress, the person's motivation is affected. There is an increase in the will of the person to do something. The interest of the person to be engaged at a certain task is also increased. When one's motivation to do work is increased, definitely the person becomes more productive. If one is productive, then that's a good thing because it is a positive outcome. Take note, however, that you stress is only considered as positive when the level of motivation that is encouraged in the person is optimal or of moderate level only. For example, I am experiencing stress. Because of this, I am moderately motivated to do tasks, then it will make me more productive. However, if I am experiencing stress, but this stress is causing my motivation to be so elevated that I'm almost almost uh, actually panicking already. The level of motivation that is brought about by the stress is too much. So therefore, do you think that I can perform well? No, I cannot perform well because I'm already in a stage of panic. So it becomes now not a positive thing. So take note. You stress can only be or can only happen if the level of motivation is moderate or optimal level of arousal. This stress, on the other hand, is the type of stress that leads to a negative outcome. The consequences of the stress leads to fatigue. So because of the stress, the person is always tired physically, you know, mentally, and psychologically. So the, the, the low you know, interest and lack of motivation of the person is coming from the tiredness, the fatigue that the person is experiencing because of the level of stress. And when this happens, this can cause now or result to sickness, illness, which can be emotional or physical. Okay, let's see if you understood so far what we had been discussing. So can stress be a good thing? So anyone, do you think stress can be a good thing? If we were to look into what we had talked earlier. So anyone? Raise of hands. So none. So may we ask students to participate? Again, no. If we experience stress then, can stress be a good thing? Hmm? Yes, yes can. Yes. Okay, how so? Uh, because it can increase the level of motivation for you stress. Ah, yes. So, because stress has something to do with motivation, it can make the person be interested in the job to finish it, to become more productive. Okay. So, any other uh, other thoughts from other classmates? Aside from Gabriela, yes. Can stress be a good thing? Okay, no more so far? All right, so, but then again, uh, we reiterate, yes, stress can be a good thing because it has something to, it affects the motivation of the person. Uh, motivation is affected. If motivation is affected, commitment to do the job will also be affected and the person will become more productive. Okay. Now, 
take note that stress will not only be caused by environmental stressors. There are certain people who are more prone to stress as compared to others. Like uh, Anita, for example, will experience more stress than Ben because Anita has certain characteristics or personalities which Ben do not have. Now, what are these personalities and characteristics? There are the so-called stress personalities. We compare now type A versus type B personality. We also compare no, uh, pessimist versus optimist and neuroticism. So here, if we, while stress no, can be caused by outside factors, environmental factors, this can also be caused by, as we mentioned, the person himself or herself. Because people have different types of personality. There are those type A personality. Now, what is again type A personality? So those are people who feels that everything is a competition. So doing a job is a competition, no? Performing is a competition. And then they have to be, they feel that they need to be at the top always. So if you have a personality A, you want to be at the top always. And they are seemingly always rushing to do tasks. In other words, these are people who do not really uh, find time to relax. Everything for them is work. They are very workaholic. Type B personality, on the other hand, is the opposite. These are people who are more relaxed. They do not find that everything is, should be a competition, but sometimes they do things just for fun. They are like easier to get along with because for them, everything is not like a rush, no? or, or they are not always rushing. Pessimists, on the other hand, no, are people who are negative thinkers. They look at the emptiness more than the content. If you ask them, for example, how full is a glass containing uh, water uh, half full, they would tell you it's half empty because they focus on the emptiness of the glass. Optimists, on the other hand, are the positive thinkers. If you ask them about the content of the water in the glass, it's half full, they would focus on the content and they will say half full instead of saying half uh, empty. Because they are positive thinkers, they are optimists. Neurotic people are those people who usually worry much. They are easily bothered by certain things. They are highly anxious. So if you compare these different personalities, type A personality, pessimist, and neurotics, these are people who experience more stress. Type B personality, optimist, and non-neurotics on the other hand, or those who scored low in neuroticism, they are people who will experience less stress. Studies would also show that gender, ethnicity, and race affect stress. In a study by Song, no, about uh, it's a new one, 2020, the COVID responses of Chinese people, they had discovered that the gender, being a male and being a female, has something to do with coping with stress. Uh, generally, Females are better in terms of dealing with stress. However, this can be uh, buffered by the presence of psychological resources. Males can also have better uh, way of dealing with stress if they have very good psychological resources. So th that's a study that would show that truly there can be differences in terms of gender being a female and being a male and in terms of ethnicity when it comes to dealing with stress. Some uh, races, for example, Asians, are better in terms of coping with stress because they're accordingly more resilient as compared to their Western counterparts. There is also a thing called uh, stress sensitization. This is otherwise known as stress inoculation. What does stress sensitization or inoculation mean? It means that people who always experience stress 
had some kind of a way already of adapting. Since they always experience stress, they are all, all like prepared already to deal with stressful things. So they are used to it. Therefore, they are better in coping with stress. They are already desensitized no? to experience stress. Therefore, when stress will come along their way, they are better to cope with it. Sources of stress can also be personal stressor. For example, fear. No? Uh, some people truly experience more fear as compared to others. So some are more inclined to fear situations than others. Because of this fear, they will experience more ex uh, stress. Resistance. This, there are some people who are not open-minded. So there is a higher level of resistance in them. Now, they manifest resistance if, for example, they are not open to opinions, they are not open to changes. If this will happen, they will experience more stress because it's more difficult for them to go with the flow, to go with the natural uh, way of how things are done or are processed. Resentment or too much hatred and disagreement uh, about certain things, policies, no, and goals, and so on, and changes can also be a factor in uh, the feeling of or the extent of one feeling stressful, uh, stress or not. Why? Because for people who have high levels of resentment, they would think that everyone or every organization is against them. The feeling that one is against another would truly increase the level of stress. So fear, resistance, resentment, these are also personal stressors that can affect the level of stress. Meaning to say, the more fear, the higher the fear, the higher the resistance, the higher the resentment, the higher would be the level of stress for these individuals. Sources of stress coming from occupational stressors. So like, for example, you talk about the job characteristics. You talk here about the nature of the job itself. So the job characteristics, specifically role conflict. The job of one no, requires him or, or her to perform different or seemingly opposite goals or opposite intentions. Take, for example, the task of an academic department head. So as a department head, as part of the faculty members, this person may be wanting or would want to have a long no, uh, process for the submission of certain reports. But as an administrator, this person would want to have shorter submission of reports. So there's a conflict in the role of this department head, thereby making her experience more, more stress as compared to when there is no role conflict. Role ambiguity. There are unclear uh, job roles which can lead to stress. So there are no specific job description which the employee would abide by in doing or performing his or her job. Because of this, it can cause more stress because there is more confusion on what to do or what to perform. There seemingly will be a lot to do because the person is doing some things which are not supposed to be done by the person because of lack of uh, clarity about his or her role to perform. Role overload, there's too much work to be done. There are too much tasks to be done. Uh, this can be very overwhelming to the employee So because it will lead to the person feeling that there's very little time to relax because the person is always working and working. Organizational characteristics can also be a source of stress. Stressor. For example, no, if the person, whether an employee is fit for the job or not fit for the job, talks of like competence, like the person is not suitable for the job. He or she lacks the competence. The person, therefore, lacks no, the ability. So there is confusion. 
there is an inability to perform, which would be more stressful for the person. But if the person is suitable or suited to the job, there's no problem or vice versa. The organization does not really fit the needs of the person. Uh, the organization and the person, the employee, have different sort of values. So there, it, it does not fit. It will become more stressful to be working in such work environment. Change also. If there is a change in the organization, like a merger, for example, or maybe a change in the advocacies, it can be difficult to manage you know, the, 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 the feeling because it can lead to stress because of the idea of uncertainties no? and ex expectations which are not met no? and so many others. Relations with others like with co-workers, with the boss can also be stressful. Organizational politics. So the distribution of power and authority, how it affects the behavior of workers can also be a cause of stress. So there's too much politics, no? In the organization, leading people, for example, to choose sides and the choosing of sides can be very stressful because it can lead to certain conflicts among different employees. Let's take a look at this studies compiled by no, C Engage Learning 2013 on the relationship of employee stress and occupational characteristics. Take note here, no, that look at the organizational politics. So you look at organizational politics, it's, it has the highest correlation at 0.45. This is by Miller no, uh, et al. 2008. Truly, the distribution of power in authority in its effects to the behavior of employees are connected to stress. You will see here connections, no? like organizational politics is connected to stress. If one is not fitted for a job, person, the person organization, it can also, it's connected also to stress. Lack of support coming from coworkers and supervisors is connected also to the level of stress. So you notice they are positively correlated. Therefore, like, the more that there is lack of support perceived by the employee from co-workers and supervisors, the more that they experience stress. The more that there is this organizational politics, the more that this employee will experience stress. Sources of stress can be coming from physical work environment. To sum up, there are three. So in the work environment, what are these causes of stress which are common no, to all organizations, agencies, and uh, workplaces? We have the effect or impact of the noise, the temperature, and the work schedule. So you look at the noise is the first environmental factor. Now, take note that no, noise that can cause the most stress in the employee are those with high frequency, very loud noise, no? very unpleasant noise, on and off kind of noise, unpredictable, unfamiliar kind of noise, and those which the person is very sensitive to. So these are the type of noise that can bother the person in his or her workplace or organization. So what is the effect of noise on health? Why are we bothering with this as a source? No? And something that we have to find interventions to. Because noise can affect no, our hearing. It can impair our hearing if there's too much noise. It likewise no, is not good for one's health because it increases also the blood pressure, or other related illnesses in the person, which can be very unhealthy. And it can cause no other frequent illnesses like dizziness, headache, migraine, which can also be very uh, a deterrent to the performance of a person in doing his or her job. So if, of course, you are not healthy, you will not be a productive worker. 
the effect of noise on performance. So let's take a look. Uh, okay, we mentioned the effect of noise on health, but noise can also have an effect on one's performance. How so? No, it affects no in terms of work performance. Noise can affect the quality and the kind of the work, while an employee may do his usual work. The characteristic of the work that he or she is doing is already affected. So it does not mean that noise can stop the person from doing his job. No. So, but what is affected there is the quality, the characteristic, the kind. For example, if the person is able to perform very well in embroidery, for example, in factory among factory workers, because of the noise there will be no fine stitches anymore. He may still or she may still produce the same output. No, uh, 20 pillows embroidered, for example, for uh, three hours, but the quality of, of the uh, embroidered pillows will no longer be the same because of that uh, effect of noise on the performance. There can also be you know, uh, de a decrease in the performance because it affects alertness and concentration. So since this, uh, especially cognitive tasks, like even a welder, no, even a driver, may not perform his job very well if there is too much noise because it will affect the concentration, the alertness of the person. Noise likewise affects how satisfied an employee is regarding his work output no or it has something to do with job satisfaction now in general what is the effect of noise on behavior noise no in general have narrowed no and affected uh, lead to narrowed focus or limited perspective or views so again we reiterate what we mentioned earlier it will affect concentration and alertness it lowers the ability of a person also to render service to others, no, uh, to give service, pro-social behavior. So that's the altruistic behavior. There will also be a decreased eye contact. Now, so what? You might be asking, so what? If there is the effect of noise would be to uh, decrease eye contact, no? Now, look, decreased eye contact interpreted by others, for example, clients or other people whom we usually interact with if we do not have eye contact with these people, this will be perceived as lacking of sincerity. If there is no eye contact, no, it, this will be perceived as, for example, as, as the person, me, for example, I do not have eye contact with you while talking to you, you will perceive me as not very honest not very sincere in what I'm saying and what I'm asking or requesting you to do or my intentions. So that's the, the importance of looking into this no, uh, factor. It also agitates a person, noise, no? agitates a person so that the person will be more inclined to walk often. Again, you might argue and say, oh, isn't that good for a worker to be wanting to be walking on? Because that would be a form of exercise, no? So that the person will be more active. Yes, but take note that if the person will be standing often while working, it will decrease the number of hours that this person will be performing the job. Hence, it will dis decrease also the level of productivity of the person. Now, what would be our interventions to reduce noise? especially in different companies so that we ensure that the different employees will be able to do the job well. So take note no, that uh, according to uh, rules set for conditions of work, the legal limit to which an employee should be exposed to noise no, for eight hours is about 90 decibels. Okay, so in a company, 
the noise that employees should be exposed at for eight hours duration of work should at least be just a noise equivalent to around 90 decibels. Now, so that you can imagine what 90 decibel noise is all about, it is similar to the noise created by the traffic, ordinary traffic. That's about 90 decibels for eight hours. So that's the legal limit no, imposed on different organizations. Now, so you imagine and compare a noise which can be uh, more intense than 90 decibels. You look into, for example, at uh, the noise in a restaurant. That's about 70 decibels. But if you are watching a rocket lounge, for example, that's around 180 decibels. So you imagine how intense the noise is. So what then would be a 90 decibel sound that employees should just be exposed to for eight hours? It's just equivalent to an ordinary traffic. So in the company, that the noise should be limited to the, that just kind of noise, no? Or in order also to reduce noise to have a better work condition, you change the environment. For example, you add more curtains, you add more carpet, no? or acoustic tiles so that it can buffer the noise. Reduce also the noise reaching the employee. You can recommend them to use no earplugs no, and so on. Or in general, just reduce the noise emitted. So for example, you have signs like silence, like, like they do, like in uh, workspaces where noise should really be uh, so very less. No, So they have this uh, signages, no? avoid too much noise, and so on. That can also be one intervention. All right, let's look at another stressor that can affect employees. We have temperature. Now, temperature here would be looking into whether the weather, no? climate is cold or very cold or very warm. Now, then, uh, before we look into the different no, effects, let's just have a look at the different basic information about the temperature. You remember that the body has a natural way of reducing the temperature. No, This is through evaporation when you perspire, when you are sweating, no? and through radiation also when you uh, the person will emit no, the energy to another or convert or transfer the energy to another object or a thing. But the body also has a way of increasing, no? the natural way of increasing uh, the heat. For example, when the weather is very cold, the blood vessels constrict. Uh, this is noticeable when you, how do you know that the blood vessels are constricting? You notice no, that your hairs, uh, body hairs are standing. So your blood vessels are constricting. It's a way of the body to regulate the heat to keep it inside the body so that you do not feel so cold. Okay, so like also when you are warm, the blood vessels will dilate. So you notice you have you you have you have a, a blush, no, you redness of the cheeks because the blood vessels are dilating, signifying that the body is trying to release heat. So look at the body already has natural ways of. Uh, moderating or balancing the body heat. There are no uh, effective ways also of controlling the temperature. Or rather, when you talk about temperature, you are looking into the impact of the air temperature, for example. So how cold or how warm the temperature is in the air, humidity, how wet or how dry the air seemingly is. And airflow, how cold or how warm the air is, the wind, no, it's coming from different directions. And it, the temperature can also be attested by how warm or how cold the objects are in the environment. So let's look at the effects of different temperature. The different, uh, the temperature's effect will depend upon the several factors. Now, this actually depends on whether or not it's very cold. So the temperature will depend on is, very, is it very cold? Is it very warm? Or 
what one is doing. So if the person is engaged in a stressful activity, that temperature would most likely be increased because of the body also, no? emitting energy and heat. Or it may also depend on no, the task, the workload. How heavy is the person doing, a, a, how heavy is the work the person is exposed at? The amount of exposure Exposure, meaning this is how frequent is the person exposure exposed to certain temperatures like cold or heat, and how frequent or how infrequent would be the rest periods. Meaning to say, if rest periods would be more numerous, then the temperatures effect would to the person will be minimal as compared to when there are no rest periods. So these are some interventions also, no, because temperature can depend on the, these different factors. Okay. And then another thing that can lead to stress, which is also an, a factor in work condition, are work schedules. So work shift is one you know, of these work schedules that we have to look into. Why? Because according to studies, 25% of employees have evening or night shift. And night shift in evening can be very stressful for people because it affects the circadian rhythm. What again is the circadian rhythm? It is also known as the biological clock. Now, this is like a clock in your body that will dictate when you feel awake and when you feel sleepy, what usually are this time. So if your circadian, circadian rhythm is disrupted because of the night shift, there will be more stress. Why? Because you will not be able to sleep well. You will feel so tired because of being unable to sleep. And this can lead also to irritability. No? So there are factors affecting impact of shift work. Studies would show that no, uh, being involved in evening or night shifts would actually depend on how unique the shift is. For example, if it's the first time of the employee to have this kind of schedule, definitely it will be more stressful. Uh, if it's a rotating shift, meaning to say you have it this time, this month, next month, you have the regular time, it rotates, therefore it's less stressful because there is a period for you to enjoy that lack of night shift you know, or not having that kind of shift. Frequency of rotation. If the rotation is very frequent, many times the person, the worker is assigned for a night shift, that definitely would be more stressful. Why? Because the shift is always night shift. It will take a toll on the health of the person. So it will be more stressful. Direction of the rotation. So for example, if the rotation is uh, directed towards, for example, this is the one that is the main uh, purpose of the job, like, for example, for call center agents because of the difference in the uh, time no? in, term, in, in one country to another. Some people are more engaged at night shifts because that's the direction of the rotation. It truly really is the nature of the job to be in such a uh, kind of uh, work shift, then the job would really be more stressful because it would mean that it's a semi-permanent kind of rotation. But this can also be buffered by this. You know, there are some people who are described as night people and morning people. Are you more of a night person or a morning person? How is this? No, The night people, they are actually happier, no? They are more productive working at night time. There are people like that, no? They work, they want to work when it's night time. They, they are more productive with that kind of shift. There are also people, no, who are morning people. They want to work earlier and night working would not be okay with them because they will be less productive. So what does it mean now? If the person is more of a night person, then night shifts, no schedule would be okay. It is less stressful for them. But if the person is more of a morning person, then the night shift 
kind of work would be more stressful to them. There are other sources of stress, no? Aside from in at work. Aside from uh, this environmental stressors like temperature, work schedule, and so on. You have minor frustration. So minor frustrations, you know, little irritations in the work. Like, for example, as simple as you want to staple something and you lack staple wire. Or you, are, you want to staple something, you cannot find the, staple, uh, the stapler. That can be a minor frustration when you are rushing. Or you want to look for the ruler, but you cannot find it, and so others. No, this can also lead to stress. So every time there are cases like this, it mounts up and will lead to stress. Forecasting the expectations of people can also affect stress. So some people, for example, uh, they they are expecting no for something like. Uh, they expect for positive things more in when they do some jobs. So when they do, when they pass submit an output, their expectations are high, but the feedback is not very good. So they will experience more stress. Residual, no? these are minor irritants in daily uh, the daily activities. Residual, as simple as it's raining again. Or uh, in while working, for example, uh, suddenly you forgot the, the lunch. You know, these this are minor irritants, which can also lead to stress. So it can be minor frustration, forecasting, or residual. What are the consequences of stress in or the organization? So that let's take a look at this because there truly are certain consequences. So one, no, is that its effect on job performance. Stress makes work makes workers unhappy. And you know that this will lead to uh, being less productive. If the worker is not happy, the worker is not productive. Stress can also cause burnout or the feeling that one is so exhausted that all his or her ability to, to work will collapse. When this happens, the employee's motivation and interest to work will also be affected. Stress leads to absenteeism. And when employees are absent, they cannot get the job done. And it may likewise lead to turnovers. So employees who are stressed will start to look at other jobs and resign, thinking that other companies provide less stressful environment. Or other employees treat or no, heal their stress by engaging or drinking drugs and alcohol, which affect job performance, absenteeism. No, it can lead also to burnout. And many employees may be seeking for leaves for treatment, which can increase the health care costs. So you notice it's a cycle, no? Like, okay, you the, the stress here of the employee is not uh, dealt with. So what will happen? It will affect the performance of the person. It can lead to burnout, can lead to absenteeism, turnover, and so on. The drug alcohol abuse there is a response no, to this burnout. So they, they are... They are cyclical. Each one would sort of affect each other to produce that result of not being happy in doing one's job and not being able to perform well in one's job. We mentioned about burnout, which is a very common no, experience. And I think it's important that we take note of this because many employees experience this, which can lead to the different no, factors earlier, like absenteeism, turnover, low performance in job, and so on. When a person is experiencing burnout, no, you notice the person lacks energy. He is not very productive. The person is often late. The person is always negative in terms of his thinkings and thoughts. There is decreased concentration. He easily forgets things. No, there's tension, and there is no uh, not wanting. No, that fear of not wanting to go to uh, to work. 
Again, no, let's take a look at the studies associating employee stress with job performance turnover and job satisfaction and commitment. This is compiled by C Engage Learning 2013. Okay. While with a moderate correlation, you can see here that intentional turnover you look at our figure uh, uh, table, is linked with employee stress. One of the studies also point to a negative correlation between job satisfaction in stress, such that the more dissatisfied the employee is with his or her job, the more that he experiences or she experiences stress. The lower the job performance, the higher will be the stress, in the less committed the employee is with his or her job, the more stress that he or she will experience. So there. What are the consequences of stress? So what happens now? If I am a worker, I'm an employee, and I'm experiencing stress, what would happen to me? Personally, it can lead to depression, no? Psychological. Anxiety, anger, difficulty sleeping or sleeping a lot. Physical can lead to illnesses, common uh, illnesses associated with stress. No, We have, for example, uh, even diarrhea. You have also uh, heartburns. No? You have the GERD, you know, the experience uh, uh, having acidic stomach and so on. Headaches, migraine, joint pains, behavior, behavioral no? uh, impact of stress. The person may engage or may find comfort in smoking or drinking liquor or even the use of uh, substance abuse. So, is there a hope we had seem to have discussed all negative things about stress? Yes, there is. Because there are also ways by which we can manage stress. We can manage stress by planning for stress. These are practical uh, interventions in dealing with the stress. For example, no, you talk about exercise. Exercise is a very good way of dealing with stress because exercise releases endorphins that makes a person feel good so when you exercise you release endorphins when endorphins are in your blood in your system you feel good you know about yourself about everything else laughter laughter is a way to manage stress because it's a good way to relax the body Diet, no, to consume healthy foods that buffer stress. There are food which accordingly are good so that the impact of stress will be limited to the person. Smoking reduction so that the person will feel more relaxed. Sleep, no, having a regular sleep at, uh, to rest the body and to be more energetic. Support groups for group attestation. It, it helps no, if you are a member of a group that can affirm your feelings so that you will feel good. Self-empowerment. You mobilize yourself to be competent in order to reduce feelings of inadequacy, insecurity that lead to stress. You know, in performing a job, many people are stressed because they feel actually that they are not competent. So if you empower yourself, if the employee will empower himself, the person will feel less inadequate and be more confident in doing the job. Coping skills, but take note, huh? the coping skills here are adaptive, adaptive coping skills, like those we mentioned, exercise, laughter, and so, so on. When one will experience stress, how do you manage it? How do you cope with it? No? So healthy ways to deal with stress. Now, during when you are already experiencing stress, no, uh, earlier we mentioned uh, some of the preventive measures. But here, imagine already that the person is experiencing stress. What would be done? No, relaxation techniques. So you have here suggestions about abdominal breathing. No, in the use of abdominal breathing, you 
you narrowed your focus when you breathe in and out, focusing on the movement, for example, of the abdomen. So you have there progressive muscle relaxation, focusing on breathing in order to relax the muscles, and meditation. You can follow guided meditation. Uh, suggestion, there are lots of guided med meditation no, uh, suggested from the YouTube. Time management, learn to manage time. People, all people, they are given 24 hours. So you wonder, why is it that some people, they maximize these 24 hours and some others, they are not able to maximize these 24 hours? Why? Because others are different in terms of many, uh, differ in terms of how they manage their time. So for example, for 24 hours, this student spends 16 hours playing video games. So what is left of the 24 hours would be about 8 hours to do other tasks, you know, school tasks and so on. So lack of time management, that will now be causing the stress in the person. Look at this, no? And in this uh, slide, you have here uh, something about uh, at work, the workplace, other interventions concern no, assisting with child care and elder care as they are sources of concerns for employees. So one of the interventions in order to deal with company or occupational stress would be assist, make programs in order to assist with child care and elder care. Why the concern? Studies would show that 40% of employees have children. And because uh, when they take care of their child, uh, studies would show that they would miss about eight days no, in a month's time because of their uh, giving attention to child care. So therefore, this should be, uh, there, there should be an intervention for this in order to relieve stress, the relieve the stress of workers. So what are some of these strategies according to studies? In some organizations, 33% of organizations allow their employees to bring their child in emergency cases only, you no? Know? So like even teachers, they can bring their children to school. No, but in emergency situations only. So 33 to 70% of companies use this uh, referral service. So they refer, for example, for uh, daycare, daycare uh, program so that the, the employees would go there for their children to be attended to so that they will not be bothered anymore no, by this concern. 4% of organizations in the study of C-Engage said that they subsidize the cost of child care. No? Uh, that, that, this would be good if the company is rich or have more money to spend with this. And they provide on-site child care facility. For example, if I may use, no, in our university, uh, we have this uh, child care center. So any employee, faculty member, or the non-teaching staff with a child, they can bring their children to this child care center or facility. Even as young as one month, one month old babies, up to around no, uh, five years old. So they are attended to there so that they will not be thinking anymore about the, 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 the this concern while they're working to give them a uh, less stressful work environment. Okay, what about with elder care? Why the concern? Again, 33% of employees provide elder care. Almost all employees, they have a parent no, to attend to or are elderly to attend to. And 50% of employees, no, they usually are absent, they are late, no, according to studies, because they are busy attending to their elders because of their uh, elder care responsibilities. So to buffer this, what are some of the organizational strategies suggested? 
Uh, 9%, you refer them to elder care no? uh, institutions. You have also emergency elder care in the institution itself. 2% of organizations are doing it. And on-site elder care, although this is like very you know, uh, minimal among organizations, uh, there's still about 1% who are providing elder care for their employees in order for these employees to experience less stress thinking about this concern. Okay. Uh, in providing uh, one, one intervention also to manage stress, especially with the concern of work shift, no shifting a uh, work schedule. Here are the studies, no uh, providing flex time. Uh, fifty three percent of companies are offering this so that they would alleviate the stress experienced by employees. So flex time, for example, instead of going to work at no, seven, uh, 8 to 5, the person may have an option of going to work 7 to 4 so that there is more time to attend to children uh, upon dismissal at 4. A compressed work week. So you for have here, for example, instead of having work from Mondays to Friday, you can have Mondays to Thursday. But this time, an increase more R for nine hours every day instead of the eight hours. So 35% of work organizations are doing this. Job sharing, no, like team teaching. 13% of companies are doing this to alleviate stress also among their employees. Ah, in terms of life work intervention, in general, no, to create wellness programs. So 75% of companies offer wellness programs, wellness information. So I think everyone has almost has this nowadays. No, as simple as the exercise routines every morning, or you have the Zumba schedules no, given to employees. Uh, these are some of these things. Or when they have a meeting, they go out of town so that aside from the meeting, they would also have team building. Oh, they're there. Health screening, no, 40%, 36% of companies, uh, they have stop smoking programs, uh, smoking you know, uh, prevention programs. 30% of companies, they subsidize fitness center. So they provide a gym, you know, a fitness center in the company, house in the company for employees to go there. Uh, before they go to work or after they are done with their work. Weight loss program, 30% of companies are offering this, although also as part of their wellness program. So you see, there are different kinds of interventions that can be given to these different employees in order to buffer no stress. Okay, so let's see. What have we discussed so far? What should organizations do to reduce stress? So, for example, you imagine a kind of an organization uh, like in academe, teaching, in the industry, and so on. Uh, what do you think should organizations do to reduce stress? From the personal no, interventions to maybe uh, organization initiated uh, uh, other programs or training programs. Anyone? Or will I call somebody? So, dear students, I hope you are still listening and participating in our discussion. All right. So, let's look at that. Let's take a look at this question and our discussion question. What should organizations do to reduce stress then from what we had discussed so far? I hope I am not talking very fast. Okay. Ayo, teman-teman. Gimana caranya organisasi okay. itu bisa mengurangi stres? Pertanyaannya. Monggo, uh, bagi yang bingung jawab dalam bahasa Inggris, tidak apa-apa dalam bahasa Indonesia nanti uh, saya terjemahkan. I told them that if, if they don't answer in uh, English, they can answer in Indonesia and I will translate it to you. Uh. Ah yes yes sir yes. Oke, okay. menurut pendapat kalian gimana? Gimana caranya sebuah organisasi itu bisa mengurangi stres dari anggotanya? 
nggak usah dalam konteks perusahaan nggak apa-apa dalam konteks organisasi secara umum misalnya ormawa atau dan sebagainya so I told them that uh, they can imagine not only organization as a company but also they can also imagine organization as a student organization and so on so it can be related for them especially uh, many of them are member of student organization gimana teman-teman silakan Brittany probably placing the right person in the right place so they actually enjoy doing the things that they do and probably not overworking them because uh, it I think it's it could be a stressor too and even if uh, the employees is overworked maybe the organizations can give them some kind of compensations thank you ah, yes okay. Okay, thank you, Brittany. Yes, you are correct. No, you remember what we mentioned earlier overwork, too much work given on an employee can lead to stress. But one way to buffer this would be okay, perhaps the person would want to work more if he will or she will also be compensated for that. So there is some kind of an, an a price for working. Uh, too much then that would buffer the stress because there is a higher motivation of the person to engage at such job or such work okay yes another um, um, okay okay i will continue so for me how to register in organization is first of all we need to enjoy every every work that we need to do I mean, like we need to know clearly about the day's job and we need to see clearly for the teamwork so we can uh, to do it with enjoy. Yes. Okay. So one should apply in a job. No, it's something to do with the personal no motivation of the person. If I am to work for a company, if I'm to work for an organization, then I should find that company where I would be happy working for, okay? So that that would increase my commitment, my motivation to work, and we, we could also reduce stress on my part. Again, the suitability again, no, of the person is the one at play here, okay? Other thoughts from the other classmates? Yes, Nita. I'm sorry, ma'am. I guess Putri raised her hand first. Ah, all right. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Putri, okay. Before, af after you, then we have Nita. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for the... Yeah. Uh, for me, everyone's stressor is a different, right? We can apply the same method to everyone. That every individual is a, have a, their own stressor. But for me, having a work-life balance is a must like uh you work but at the same time you can get uh i think holiday or just go out together with the or organization so uh, they are just not working professionally but they can become a family team outside the, outside the working time so that maybe you can register stress yeah just yeah, okay. So both ways, no? Yeah, stress can be yeah, coming from, because that's what we mentioned uh, earlier. Stress can be coming from the person himself or herself because of the nature of the person, but it can be coming from the company. So in order now to reduce stress, both uh, sources should be attended to. Okay, yes, Nita now. No? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, I think one way to reduce um, stress in an organization is that the, the organization have to um, find out what 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 are the major st uh, stressor that um, employees um, or other members are facing um, for example if the problem has something to do with kind of noise that has been explained uh, before um, then the organization or the company can maybe add a um, curtain, like what you have said. Um, and then uh, one way to find um, what 
are the stressor that um, the employees or other members are facing is just mainly to build up the communication amongst them um, so that um, um, so that uh, they can communicate what the problems that they have and then from that we can um, kind of find out um, the solution um, that an organization can can provide for them I think yeah that's it for um, from me thank you yes no very practical solution of course uh, let's look at this stressors. So each company may have different stressor, which is more intensely manifested as the one causing stress than others. So, or other, for example, organization, they have more this than that. So for example, if noise is the issue, then directly attack the source of the stress in order to reduce stress. Okay, yes. Other thoughts from other classmates? No more. Ada lagi yang ingin beride atau mungkin teman-teman bisa sharing tuh uh, apa namanya pengalaman-pengalaman pas di organisasi kira-kira uh, challenge-challenge apa yang kalian temui terus gimana cara cara menghadapinya. Tunggu. No more. Okay. Yeah. If you don't have any more uh, thoughts to share, perhaps later we still have a few slides you know, to show before we will end up with our presentation. Okay. So, one of the things that may concern also the organization, the company, while it may not be true for all, is workplace violence. This is especially true among now, uh, among, if you look at the certain uh, uh, news, no, stories about workplace violence, there are quite a number already. Especially so if uh, you consider the nature of the workplace or the kind of that environment. Like even among police officers, there is even a workplace violence that occur there, which can also be alarming and may cause stress to uh, the workers in that company or that organization. According to studies you know, uh, by C Engage Learning Again 2013, the, there are homicide reasons for 12% of workplace fatalities. So there, the violence committed in different companies, 12% of this no, uh, had caused death to some employees in that organization or in that company. And 1% of the employee yearly is a victim. So you can see here, it, while it's very minimal, one person is still of an employee. Like imagine in a year, there's one person, one employee there who will die because of workplace violence. Although this, this is already declining since 1993. Uh, there are different types of workplace violence like killing, no? killing of another person, the commission of a crime, 70%. Uh, the commission of a crime towards a police officer, 19%. Acts of vengeance towards an employee, 11%. In this acts of vengeance towards an employee, violence may not necessarily be uh, killing. It may also be destruction of property of the employee concern or the stealing of property no, of the employee concern. So uh, these acts of vengeance, they are committed by current employees, 44% of them, former employees, 23%. Stories like, for example, if an employee had been uh, forced to resign, later he will come back no, anonymously and will cause some harm to properties of the company or the organization. And these are some of the stories you know, about workplace violence. Domestic violence can also occur, like, for example, you know, uh, fighting among co-workers. 
fighting among uh, the, the boss and the subordinate, no? quarreling, which may not be physical, but there is some degree of aggression there. And others around 12% kind of uh, violence. So workplace violence perpetrator who usually commits no, the violence in the company mostly are males, about 80% of them, and mostly are in their 20 to 50 years of age, usually in their 40s. These are people who lack self-confidence and had felt that they had not been competent in doing their job. And there was no other way no, for them to uh, bring their sentiments but to create some kind of violence in the company. So this one, they can be isolated, they can be withdrawn, the person concerned, and take note in workplace violence, the, the stress that will be experienced by the person are, are in, in two ways. No, The one who is committing the violence can also experience stress or is also experiencing stress. That's why the person was forced to do that act of violence because the level of stress already is too much to handle. Take note also that aside from the one doing or the perpetrator doing the violence, the, the co-employees are the ones also who will experience stress because of this violence committed on the, the workplace. So how would the workplace violence be reduced? You tighten no? security measures. It should be, there should be, again, we look at recruitment, no? better employee screening methods, increased management awareness. What about what is this that the management should be aware of? The gripes no? or the different concerns of the employees so that there will be no employee who will feel so frustrated because of a certain concern like lack of not being given no overtime pay, for example, or a continuous, very bad no working condition, like it's very warm, it's very hot, and the, em the employer do not even, does not even provide a better working condition. So if this one will continue for a long time, it may produce some kind of frustration among employees, which could lead to uh, workplace violence. Okay. So if you are in the company or an organization and you are the manager, what do you think should you do if you believe that an employee is dangerous? You notice no, that uh, there's something wrong with a, an employee already. The employee is starting to be absent frequently. And you notice when he goes to work, he is under the influence of liquor. And people are saying he's doing that because this person is so frustrated with his job for not being promoted for 20 years already. If you are then the manager and you believe that the employee is dangerous and may create uh, violence in the workplace, what should you do? Okay, anyone from the class can may answer the question. Uh, jadi kalau misalnya teman-teman sebagai pimpinan gitu ya, manajer gitu dalam satu organisasi atau dalam satu perusahaan, dan ketika kalian mengidentifikasi gitu, kalian identifikasi, ternyata ada bawahan teman-teman yang ada indikasi mengalami kondisi berbahaya. Nah, memang kita nggak sepakati kondisi berbahaya ini apa, gitu ya bisa berbahaya secara mental, bisa berbahaya secara fisik, tapi um, apa yang yang kamu bisa lakukan? Gitu. What should you do as a leader atau as a manager? Silakan teman-teman. Jangan ya mungkin yang yang simple simpel gitu ya misalnya dia udah nggak masuk ghosting kayak gitu kan? Tiba-tiba ya, ghosting atau dia menunjukkan absensi yang tinggi nggak nggak mengerjakan tugas dengan baik. Nah kira-kira gimana? Apa yang kalian lakukan?
Silakan. Yes. Anyone? Take uh, you kindly share your thoughts. Mungkin pimpinan organisasi sini siapa ya? Ya Kormawa ya Kormawa. Oke, okay, Nita silakan. I think um, we can have a heart to heart talk with them. Uh, maybe more as a friend than a manager so um, they can conveniently um uh, share their problems with us yeah yes i remember what you shared earlier no having that open line of communication so communication is important so that between the manager and the employee so that there will be an address or remedy given to the problem raised by the employee. So if the problem of the employee is attended to, of course you expect now that there will now be uh, less probability of the employee to cause violence in the company since his problem is already being addressed to or somebody uh, is listening to him sometimes no people they raise issues sometimes they know that these issues cannot really be answered immediately but by the fact that they are aware that others are listening or are will be ready to listen to their gripes no the, to their issues or concerns that is already enough for them that's already a good intervention to be given them okay yes any others all right. Now, perhaps we will have other more opinions on the other questions. There's a chat box, ma'am, Ma'an, from Citizap. Yes. First, we need to ask their problem. Then we help him with her or her with a good advice. Yes. No. Again, so something to do with communication, provision of that communication open communication so that they can uh, discuss each other's concerns. Okay. On the ethical aspect of our discussion for stress and occupational health, let's look at also at the, 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 the ethics part. No? Does the organization have an obligation to reduce stress? So if you're talking about a company, there is this workplace, and many people, many workers are already experiencing stress. Is that company, no, that organization obligated or has the responsibility to look into this uh, employee so that the company will do something to reduce stress? Any thoughts from the class, please? Yes. So, yes, uh, Brittany. Uh, personally, I think there is no formal obligations, but if the organizations reduce the stress of the employees, uh, I think it will advantage the organizations more because they will perform better in doing their job. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, directly, there is no rule saying such. But indirectly, when you talk, for example, about like provision of good working environment, you know, that's the obligation of the uh, company. Then in, in, in relation now to the provision of good working environment, that would indirectly have some effect also on treating or dealing with the stress of the employees. Okay. Other thoughts from the other classmates? Mm -hmm. Ini apakah ada apa namanya kewajiban khusus gitu ya uh, bagi karyawan bagi perusahaan untuk mengurangi stres kerja? Menurut kalian ada enggak kewajiban khusus gitu? Yes. So as Sir Adi Anika said, you can express yourself in your language and you can just translate it. 
so that perhaps you will be better in expressing yourself. Ya. Yeah. Monggo teman-teman. May we hear from the others? Ada enggak uh, undang-undang khusus untuk mengurangi to reduce stress tekanan? Gimana? Ada kan? Atau bingung? Perhaps you could uh, indirectly, you no, know, uh, focus on this idea that what do you think? Are companies or employers you no know, obliged to, for example, to make their workers happy? To be comfortable? Yes, no, and why? No. You, 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 we, we could uh, rephrase it in in that manner. Kalaupun bukan mengurangi stres, apakah um, ada kewajiban? Gitu ya, ada kewajiban khusus dari perusahaan supaya membuat karyawan itu lebih lebih happy, lebih bahagia. Ada enggak? Kira-kira. Anyone? You can write in the chat box. We have. Okay, so for Jeremiah, there isn't any obligation to do so, but if they want to keep their organization going and growing, then they should. Yeah. So you remember what we mentioned before? Happy workers are productive workers. Happy workers are oftentimes those people who are not stressed about their jobs. Yes, no. So you want their, they want their companies, their organization to grow, then they should attend to it. All right. Yes. Thank you, Jeremiah. Any other? Yes, Putri. Atere. Uh, okay. For me, they had no obligation, but it's for, it's more like guilty. Feelings like want to humiliate other people. Yeah, like that. Ah, okay, similar to what Jeremiah also mentioned. Yes, so no obligation, but you want to improve the work condition, which is part of the obligation. Yes, they have to. Okay, any other thoughts before we will end? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Uniki. Uh, yeah. Morning, ma'am. So I think um, this one is considered as an unsaid and unwritten rule mm -hmm. because like um i think every organizations are aware that they they have to um reduce stress because um it affects their reputation i think yeah if i mean like if their employees are stressed they may tell that to other persons and the organization representations might be, you know, um, like they might get a bad reputation. Yeah, yes. That's it from. Yes, okay, yes. So as we mentioned, you might not find there a very you no know, direct explicit rule you no know, on this obligation to reduce stress, but the companies, as you mentioned, they have this you know, responsibility to look into the welfare of their employees. And to look into the welfare, of course, they look into like health condition. And stress is one that affects the health condition of the workers. Therefore, they should be uh, looked into also. All right. Any more? No more? Uh, now I want to add something. In Indonesia, uh, we have our obligation like uh, insurance. It's like BPJS in Indonesia. Yeah, it's like a uh, insurance for worker. If I'm not wrong, you miss your Pak India. Yeah, BPJS Kesehatan itu. Yeah, they can use it 
for for gospel psychology. The yeah, not right from the company, but from government. Yeah, like that. So they're not a uh, straight theory to discuss, but they can use it for gospel psychology. Yeah, yes. So it's part of the insurance not package for the health benefit. After all, no, uh, burnout is one health issue. Burnout or stress is one health issue because it affects other physiological responses or conditions or it can make cause or lead to illness. Indirectly, perhaps, but it can aggravate, for example, an existing illness. For example, people with heart condition, because of stress, they may be seeking for more, no, uh, you like uh, live benefits, health live benefits, because of this certain concern. Okay, there's another from our chat. In my opinion, there are no rules to reduce stress, but if the company wants to implement rules to reduce stress it will have a good impact on the employee and the company's performance. So yes, so it's like an option already. So of the company, the organization to implement it because after all, it will benefit them also. So if workers are more productive because they are less stressed, then that would be good for the company. That would also be good for the employees. Win-win no? situation. All right. Okay. So, any other thoughts? Now, thank you very much for your sharing and participation in our uh, discussion in our dif the different topics we had covered so far. So here I will leave you with. Uh, I think that's it. So there is that's the end of my slide, and. Uh, I want to thank everyone for their active particip participation in class. Okay, nice meeting all of you also. And nice to be part of this. I appreciate that I am part of this learning session to impart what stress is all about, to review you on concepts of stress and occupational health. Okay. Sir Anika? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I am done already with the lecture. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. But uh, before we closing, if, are you have any questions, guys? Yes. Okay, you have other questions before we leave, for example, the class? Other clarifications in general, no? about the topic from what we discussed so far from our first slide, concepts of stress up to the different stressors, up to the different interventions of uh, to deal with or to buffer with stress. Do we have other questions? Not only on this last slide. So from the concepts of stress, from the different stressors, from the different uh, interventions. So three, focus. Or clarification. No? Focus. Semuanya yes. clear? Clear. Clear, yeah. I yes, uh, I think that's all. Uh, we all wrap up. Um, thank you very much for the sharing. Um, are you sure, guys? You don't have any questions? I'll stop sharing yes. Jadi siap yes, untuk OAS, ya? So. Okay, although I think no stress is a very is, is something that you had encountered already in other subjects. 
yes. from first year, no, from the introduction to psychology, we already have a chapter on uh, stress in coping. Jadi sudah didapat dari apa materi awal gitu ya, klinikal dan sebagainya. Di klinis psikologi klinis juga dapat gitu tentang stres. Psikologi umum juga dapat. Oke, okay. and I think it's all wrap. Uh, Memaan. Uh, before we leave, um, we can take a photo. Teman-teman habis ini jangan dulu left, uh, karena ada beberapa pengumuman yang akan kami sampaikan. Gitu ya, jadi jangan dulu left. Ya, yeah. we continue with take photo. Yeah. Please open the camera and I can take your photo. Okay, uh, first slide. One, two, three. Okay, there will be four slides. So hang on, second slide, one, two, three. The third, one, two, three, and the last one. Okay, this screen sheet will be your absence, your presence, uh, your attendance for today, okay? Okay, so once again, um, a memory, memaam before you left, uh, we have some certification from our faculty. Uh, wait a minute, I will open. Okay, I will share screen first and still uh, ini ya teman-teman tip -teman. cam ya. Hmm. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Okay then. Memang, thank you very much for your time for your sharing uh, for us. Hopefully that our topic discussion for today will be benefit for us and also uh, will add the knowledge for our students. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully that we can meet someday um, offline. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. So I will you. be leaving already. Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Yang lain tunggu dulu, ada beberapa pengumuman, teman-teman. Oke, sebentar. Ini kalau untuk invite, oh iya, ya. Uh, Pak Yonatan dan teman-teman dari Madiun, terima kasih ya. banyak. Terima Adian. kasih, Pak Andi. Ya. Kami ya. pamit, Pak Andika, ya, berarti. Oh, oh, kalau boleh, tidak masalah. Okay. Thank you, ya. Terima kasih, thank you. Terima kasih buat semuanya. Thank you, thank you. Uh -uh. Jadi teman-teman pengumuman pertama adalah minggu depan kita masih ada kelas terakhir, gitu ya. Kita masih ada kelas terakhir untuk kuliah bio. Kita akan bahas tentang PK Kompas, oke? Okay? Nah, kelasnya jamnya itu akan sesuai dengan jam biasa. Jadi kelas pertama jam 8.50, kemudian jam kedua jam berapa? 10.40 ya? Oke. Okay. Itu pengumuman pertama. Pengumuman kedua, habis ini ada kakak kelas kalian yang ingin uh, skripsian. Jadi tolong dibantu untuk mengisi kuesionernya. Gitu ya. Nah, hitung-hitung amal kalian supaya nanti pas skripsi lancar. Ya. Tolong di ini semua. Sebentar. Nah, anaknya ini nggak bisa masuk katanya. Tapi saya sudah tak kirim linknya kok nggak bisa masuk ya. Sebentar. C, uh, jangan dulu left ya, teman-teman ya. I, sudah 84 ini. Gak apa-apa kalau kalian mau off cam gak masalah. Tapi jangan dulu left. Sebentar, tak, telepon ke dia.
Sebentar ya teman-teman ya. Thank you.